So we're looking at the brain model here, and um, we can see that the brain has several key areas. We have the cerebrum, which is all of this up here. We also have the cerebellum, which is more posterior here, and the brain stem, which is here. Now, the cerebr there's two halves to the cerebrum. We have the right and the left cerebral hemispheres. Those cerebral hemispheres are separated by what's called the longitudinal fissure here. So the cerebral, right cerebral hemisphere, left cerebral hemisphere, separated by the longitudinal fissure. And what separates the cerebrum from the cerebellum is the transverse fissure. Now, uh, the cerebrum also has lobes. And there's five lobes in the cerebrum. We have the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, occipital, temporal, and then one that's deep in here called the insula. You got a little piece of insula in there, okay? Now, these lobes are separated by sulci, and the sulci are basically just slight indentations in the cortex or outer layer of the brain. So all of these would be sulci, these sort of valleys deep in the brain. And then the hills are the gyri. So gyri are the hills, sulci are the valleys. And there's specific sulci that separates the different lobes. So for instance, the frontal lobe is separated from the parietal lobe by what's called the central sulcus here. So that means that this is the frontal lobe ahead of the central sulcus. This is the parietal lobe behind the central sulcus. That's the central sulcus right here. What separates the frontal lobe from the temporal lobe is called the lateral sulcus, out here, it's the lateral sulcus. And then what separates the parietal lobe from the occipital lobe is the parieto occipital sulcus, out in this area. Uh, now, if we look at the central sulcus as a landmark, this gyrus that's just anterior to the central sulcus, as it's labeled here, is called the precentral gyrus, aka primary motor cortex. Still part of the frontal lobe, but it's a specific region of the frontal lobe called the precentral gyrus or primary motor cortex. Just posterior to the central sulcus, we find the postcentral gyrus, also called the primary somatosensory cortex, but that's part of the parietal lobe, okay? And it's posterior to the central sulcus. Now, um, looking at some of the uh, cerebellar structures here, it looks like there's gyri and sulci in the cerebellum. However, on the cerebellum, we don't have gyri. The hills in the cerebellum are called folia, and the valleys are still called sulci, okay? Now, what separates the two cerebellar hemispheres here is uh, called the vermis, okay? It separates the two cerebellar hemispheres. And um, if we look on the underside of the brain, we can still see things like your frontal lobe, your temporal lobes here, as well as the brainstem. Now the brainstem is divided into three parts. We got the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. Now if we look at the brain in its mid-sagittal view, we gotta separate these halves, we can see some other structures. So looking at the mid-sagittal view of the brain, what we find here is this large structure here is called the corpus callosum, or colossal body. And this corpus callosum actually connects the two cerebellar, um, cerebral hemispheres together. That's how your right and left cerebral hemispheres communicate with each other. It's this big old commissural fiber tract called corpus callosum. Okay. Now nearby we have what's called the fornix, which is part of the limbic system. We have what's called the diencephalon, which is all this region really deep in the brain. Um, now the diencephalon is divided into three parts. We got the thalamus, hypothalamus, and epithalamus. The diencephalon forms the walls of the third ventricle. So if you look closely, you see there's an indentation here. That's the third ventricle. And the third ventricle is actually connected to the lateral ventricles, which you find deep in the cerebrum. We can see this on the other side of, the, of this brain model here, where on this side, it shows the lateral ventricle in position. Okay. Now, what normally covers this lateral ventricle and separates lateral ventricles is something called septum pellucidum which we could see back on the other model. I'll grab that. We can see over here where there would be a lateral ventricle, this tissue is called septum pellucidum, which separates the two lateral ventricles so they don't connect, okay? Now what connects the lateral ventricle to the third ventricle is called the interventricular foramen or foramen of Monroe, and it's sort of up in this crevice here, would be the interventricular foramen. Now the third ventricle connects to the fourth ventricle, which is between your cerebellum and pons, through what's called the cerebral aqueduct. So the third ventricle is connected to the fourth through the cerebral aqueduct. And then this continuation of the fourth ventricle down the spinal cord is called the central canal.
Now, uh, some more specific structures we can see on the diencephalon. For the thalamus, this bump right in the center of the thalamus here is called the interthalamic adhesion or called the intermediate mass. For the hypothalamus, what we find then is that it's actually connected to the pituitary gland by what's called the infundibulum. And we can see this better on the other side here. So going back to this view, what we find is still the thalamus, hypothalamus. But here's the pituitary gland on this side. Now, what connects the pituitary gland to the hypothalamus is called the infundibulum or stalk of the pituitary. So there's the infundibulum, which connects the pituitary gland to the hypothalamus. What's also nearby the hypothalamus is something called the optic chiasm. Because if you look on the underside of the brain, here's the optic nerve. Optic nerve eventually converges at something called the optic chiasm, which you can see here, which means a cross. Now, uh, for the epithalamus, we got two structures back here. We got the uh, posterior commissure, as well as, a, as well as a gland called the pineal gland, which is what secretes melatonin. So posterior commissure, and then that's the pineal gland right there. For the brainstem, remember we had the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. For the midbrain here, we can see these two bumps right back here. These are called the superior and inferior colliculi, which together form the corpora quadrigemina. So the corpora quadrigemina, you have the superior colliculus, is the superior bump, and the inferior colliculus is this inferior bump. Okay, but together form the corpora quadrigemina. Uh, for the anterior part of the midbrain, uh, which we can see on the, this inferior view, uh, this is actually going to be what's called the cerebral peduncle. And the cerebral peduncle contains your motor tracts, which connect to uh, your spinal cord. Okay, so it's the cerebral peduncle. It's part of the midbrain as well. Um, nearby, which actually isn't on the midbrain, but it's part of the hypothalamus, this little bump right there is called the mammillary body. So it's the mammillary body. And then we have the pons and the medulla oblongata. Now, from the medial view of the cerebellum, we can see things like arbor vitae, which is the white matter. It's deep in the cerebellum. And the gray matter of the cerebellum is more superficial. Some other structures we can see here, you guys, if I remove this piece, and if we look at, at the deeper sections of the brain here, so this would be sort of the brain matter that you find around uh, the lateral ventricles. This big old bump of material here, it's actually not the thalamus, this is called the putamen. Okay, so all of this is the putamen. And then what surrounds the putamen here is called the caudate nucleus. So there's the caudate. And then the very anterior tip of the caudate is called the amygdala or amygdaloid body. Again, that's part of your limbic system, so for emotional responses.